In this uh, DVD series, I like to share with you uh, some of the insights that I've gained in 35 years of medical practice. Um, in 2007, I was voted Physician of the Year by the Global Foundation of Integrative Medicine as one of the leading physicians in integrative medicine worldwide. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with that I know anything more than other people, but I have a way of uh, diagnosing and treating patients um, that has evolved in my practice um, that I think is very good and very helpful and can be taught to others. So other practitioners that come after me can stand on my shoulders and do it better than I do it. In this first uh, DVD um, that you're watching here, I'd like to introduce you uh, to a fundamental uh, philosophical model uh, that has evolved for me, uh, from which I understand illness much better and also healing modalities much better than I ever did. And it is um, interwoven with what I call the seven factors. Now let me start. Uh, the seven factors are uh, those issues that are causing chronic health problems. The, the first one and foundational one, um, I'll just uh, lead you through it. The first and foundational one is toxicity and chronic infections. Um, the other one are biochemical abnormalities, usually uh, referred to as genetic issues. Um, the third one is structural problems, the type of stuff that chiropractors and osteopaths deal with. Uh, the fourth one is a little bit more difficult, is what we call in Europe interference fields, that any structure in the body can become electrically active, like an additional pacemaker in the heart when some heart cells become dysfunctional. Uh, very often scars and autonomic ganglia in the body can be uh, arising to behave, electrically speaking, abnormally and cause trouble in the body. That's less known uh, in the U.S and in Britain, more known in the Spanish-speaking countries, France, and in Germany. Um, the fifth very serious issue and growing issue is uh, electromagnetic radiation from cell phone broadcasting, from household currents, uh, from radio broadcasting, television broadcasting, from wireless internet, and uh, other household items. And uh, the sixth one is food allergies can cause significant health problems. And the last but not least is the realm of psycho-emotional, spiritual, social problems. So um, I will take you now through the five levels of healing and will remind you of where these seven factors can be seen. So uh, this model of healing arises from the old yogic tradition. Uh, Patanjali, uh, the father of modern yoga, several thousand years ago, um, wrote about a system of healing that he called the five koshas. The five koshas can be translated into the five bodies or the five envelopes that we have. The first body is the physical body. The second body is the energy body. i get into that in a moment. The third level is the mental body. The fourth level is the intuitive body, or the dream body, as the shamans call it. And the fifth level is the spirit. Now, let me take you through these levels in a way that may be helpful in understanding what you can actually do with the system. I want to talk about ART. And I want to start uh, in the beginning to introduce you to some of the tools that we're using, the tools of the trade. Uh, ART stands for Autonomic Response Testing. And we simply are looking for ways of showing if the person goes into a stressed state or into a healing state. Um, in more physiological terms, we want to see if we for example, if somebody eats wheat, 
if it activates the sympathetic nervous system and creates a stress reaction, or does it create a nice, relaxed, parasympathetic, dominant healing state? When the person was hungry, you felt the stomach, the person is happy, everything is relaxed. Many tools available in medicine and in psychology to determine if somebody is in a healing state or in a stressed state. Uh, usually these tools are referred to as biofeedback tools and uh, I've experimented with all of them, many of them. Uh, they're also used in the form of lie detectors, uh, which are also useful and can be used for this work. However, we found that by using feedback uh, from the muscles of a patient, that we get more accurate readings that are not distorted by inserting an instrument between us and the patient. Uh, many patients today react to anything electronic that you put on their body. And what you will then measure is their reaction to the instrument rather than uh, the reaction to what you're trying to test in the patient. Of course, these principles have been examined uh, in the field of kinesiology, in the field of Chinese pulse testing. Uh, there's many tools that use various indicators in the body to determine the state of the autonomic nervous system. Uh, what we found out as a very simple principle is this. For example, if the patient is deficient in vitamin C and I introduce vitamin C into the patient, it will create a healing state rather than a stress state. If a patient is toxic with mercury and I will introduce tiny amounts of more mercury in the system, the patient will respond with a stress state. That is pretty self-evident. What takes a little stretch of the imagination is that how does the patient know that I'm introducing mercury when I just put it in his hands or close to him? And for that, I, I answer that with one of my uh, deepest learning experiences I had with this. Um, this was a patient who was allergic to local anesthetics, just to keep it short, and went into deep anaphylactic reactions every time a dentist used a local anesthetic. I tried to test her on local anesthetics just using muscle testing, and every time my assistant came within six feet or eight feet of this patient with the little tray that she brought into my room uh, with local anesthetics on it, the patient would have an anaphylactic reaction. And uh, we ended up double and triple blinding this experiment where neither I knew where the nurse was with the local anesthetics nor the patient. And we could, within half an inch, determine how far away from the patient the local anesthetic had to be and the patient would react. Now, I'm assuming that it was not just a gifted patient, <laughs> uh, one patient in uh, six billion who had the ability to sense things in the field outside, away from the body. I do uh, know it's a human, it's a property of all higher evolved animals. It's very well studied in sharks. They can detect the victim through their autonomic nervous system up to 16 feet away. They form an inner image how the person looks like even in the most murky water. And many other animals have, uh, have been shown to have this sense. It's a, um, I call it an energetic immune system that responds to the presence of a particular substance away from the body. And that is the reflex that we're using and that's the only thing that will take a stretch of imagination. Is it easy to prove? Absolutely. We can give somebody who's got a wheat allergy uh, wheat to eat and record his a heart rate variability, that's a quantitative assessment of the autonomic nervous system, and demonstrate the stress reaction.